G'day everyone, and welcome back to Infinity Horde. After spending too much time yesterday questing, we need to build and finish the Horde base today, ready for the Horde tonight, which is a step up from the last Horde. The difficulty is harder, since day 11 it's been on Survivalist. Additionally, with the move to the desert, the game stage gets an additional 1.5 times loading, and lastly, with the Infinity Horde mod controlling the number of zombies required, the Horde target will be larger again compared to day 10. In fact, not only does the number of zombies increase each time, the size of the increase also increases with each horde. To help with the base build, I've headed out before dawn to get in a bit of stone mining, as I'm short of cobblestone. With cops expected for the horde tonight, I need to ensure that the base will withstand any explosions, so I need cobble at a minimum and concrete in the critical spots. Okay. So we've still got some cobblestone crafting. That's got three minutes to go, but we might as well get started on the base. Okay, so we've got the basics of the base still sort of laid out here from where we were yesterday. A few more zombies hanging around from the morning. Let's just do a little bit of a clean up. So in terms of building, I'm just going to get straight into it with the wood frames. I am going to change the ramp up a little bit this time. Just get a few of these tools out the way that we're not going to need. And we'll split up the blocks, so we've got plenty of room to move. This time I'm going to use the just the ramp, the ramp incline, for the majority of the ramp, funnily enough. There we go, the ramp incline and the ramp incline filler. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five is where we're going to start. Filler. Beginning's always fairly easy to get going, just because you can work like this back and forth. And then once we get to there, we can switch over to the wood blocks. Connect it up like that. And then on top, we are just going to need one of the full ramp blocks just to make it match. And from here, we need to start building from on top. Just edging, getting to the close. I actually find it easier with the rank pink line and the filler blocks. You still got to be able to just get to the edge and not fall off. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a broken leg. Once you get the warning sign that you're too close to the edge, that's when it's time to switch over and start doing the vertical support. That one's 10 high now. And then the last one will get us up to 15 high, which again is just going to eliminate all of the rage mode. Anything above 11 will do the job, but going to 15 just means that when you've got zombies landing on each other's heads, you just remove that little bit of extra chance that they might go into rage mode. It's a little more, more expensive building it this way. That's what we're going to do for today. Now from here, this is where we build the 12 block long, super skinny pole for the zombies to run across. But because that's a little bit harder to build with the really thin supports as well, we're going to skip that for now. Gen's open for business. And we're going to come over here and we're going to try and build the rest of the fighting section where we're going to actually do our fighting from. So what we'll do for this is we'll start with one of these shapes. Copy the rotation. That's two. We want to go to 14. That's 14 high. And then the last one that we want on top will just be our normal cube. And that'll be the floor, the base. Now, as you can see, I've made a fatal floor and I haven't left myself the ability to get down easily. So what we're gonna do is sneak that out, drop that down, and then we can do that. Get ourselves a little bit down. That's not the advisable way of doing it, but we got the job done. What we should have done is also come around here build ourselves a ladder up because this is where the ladder's going to be 
So if we just grab any old ladder, let's just use the square. Let's go up this way to start with. Let's count of how many that is. Okay. Now we can build the floor of the base across to us. Jump up like that. Build one more ladder on top. And there's our base. So that's a much more sturdy way, safer way to build it. And it means that we can get up and down more easily. Now we just need to finish the support this side. Although that will also give us problems when we get to the top, I'm sure. What we might actually do is go up both sides at once. That one. Copy the rotation. The reason we're doing it this way, you'll see once we get to the top, we can't jump anymore. We need to do it that way create the support now we can jump up move that block without anything falling down and then make our way up the top back in there like that and now we can come down and we've got a properly supported base with a ladder and then come back around this side and finish off this one Running low a little bit on blocks, so let's do that one, copy the rotation. It's going to be a five wide, so we'll put those two light. And it's going to be six long, you can see. corners I'm just going to do something a little bit different put a little bit of a curve on it let's grab the cube quarter round and find where that one is that's the one I want pop that one on the edge like that and Same over this side. Same over this side. There we go. So that's starting to get there. We've got our platform in place. We don't have all of the sports in place yet, but that's something that we can sort out towards the end. As you can see, that's there. Now we just need to start thinking about what we do for the middle and how we deal with that. What we might start off doing, see if we can node pole this one. It's going to be a little bit hard to get the copy the block. There we go, that should do it. Copy the rotation. See how that's a little hard to place when you're jumping. So we might just need to scaffold this one instead. Grab a cube block. Place them as we go up. A little bit more painful this way, but it gets there eventually. Okay, now here's where we need to consider how high we go. Because this one needs to be the side centered pole. There it is. And we want a similar one underneath. 
That's going to be our backup pole. In case the top one fails, or really the top two fail, then there's the question of, I don't think we can fit another block in there. I think that's connected. It looks a bit odd, but that is actually connected to the support. You can see that if we take that out again, then we can put one in. And that's it there. Let's see if we can get up. There we go. So that's the beginnings of our pole across. We almost want to leave that again so that we can do the upgrades, but we can always redo that later. Let's check for zombies. No zombies. Okay. Let's keep going then. Same again. Okay. What are we up to? I think we need one more. Then we need those two. Two, three, there we go, that's connected. Beautiful. All right. So now we have, if we run up, should have a continuous path straight up our ramp with no line of sight you can see that the zombies as they come up they won't be able to see anything come straight across this and hit our finding position here from here it's just a case of really just finishing off a very basic kind of cube as someone called out in the comments we should have some cops in the next horde, so we need to worry about cops fit. So I've used a lot of just plain cube blocks. I'm not going to bother with any sort of fancy windows or anything like that in this one. How high do we want? One, two, three, and then a fourth level on top, just to give us a bit of headroom that shape and rotation see we're starting to hit the limit of stability I think we might need to go and add in some of the extra supports that we need. What I might do though is, they should be there. Oh, that's not good. That's not what you want to do. All right, that's salvageable. Plus side, the long span, which is one of the fiddliest bits to build, stayed there. And the rest of our base stayed there. So let's clean this up and then we should be good to go. plus side now there's nothing in the top to get in our way as we do these supports so let's get the supports up Let's give it a bit of extra support and pop them in now and let's do the front ones. The advantage that this will have of course is that with the extra supports it does mean that if there is any cop spit or any explosions really from cops that fall straight down and explode next to the support pillars there's quite a bit of redundancy 
with the six pillars. Obviously, well, there's six pillars on both front and back, so it's going to be very sturdy. The reason it collapsed, obviously, with just the wood frames is that the wood frames don't have the structural stability of the concrete and the even the cobble, but it is better when you're trying to build a base, in my opinion, just to do it with the wood frames, unless you're really <laughs> much better than me, and you can make sure that everything's in the right place first go. Some people can do it. I certainly can't. Okay, that should be a bit better. Still need a few more frames, I think, to replace the ones that we uh, accidentally destroyed. There's the lunchtime cicadas. Need to get a move on. Thankfully, pretty much done now, at least with the main parts. with a little uh, hole left for access to the roof. And we've got room for a door. And the ladder out. Okay. Got a few wood frames that are already just with us. So we might just use those because this would just be my standard fighting platform. like that not going to worry about hatches or anything for molotovs since we've got a very thin pole coming at us it's not going to be that many grouped up and let's copy that rotation and there we go so that's the metal bit now that we come down here should be able to take off those bottom two ladders but i'm terrified about making another collapse now as you can see it's nothing particularly fancy but that's the main bit of it since we're a little bit hungry and i didn't bring any food with me we might need to just run back and have a look at that in a second and then start thinking about some add-ons for that base I had a bunch of stuff in the cooking pot to have a meat stew got a bit of bacon and eggs we'll just hold on to that as well Got some concrete. We should be thinking about electric fences and generator banks and a few other bits and pieces, but obviously we need to finish the base first, so let's go back and do that. Let's actually just take these away so the zombies can't come up and join us. They've got a path up now through the main way. Let's just build ourselves a wood door. Don't need anything too fancy and some spikes for the roof. Thing that we want to do start to think about traps electric traps in particular and most specifically electric fences so let's put in a couple of doors that'll give us access to the outside and for these let's split them in half i was going to use the cube what's it called cube corner the one and the that one we'll place a couple of these out now the trick with these is that you want to be one two So the pathing works. Thank you for testing that. And then 
from there. Just like that. Oh, oh, no, that's not good. That is the risk of building in this method. And we do it that way. this and actually what I should do I regret this if a zombie comes it will actually mean that we can go out and just go like this we don't actually need it much further than there for now so let's just go to there and Repeat that on the sun on the other side. And I think we need to go and support that so that we don't have more collapses and we can replace. There we go. It's not ideal. It's going to get the job done. And we can come fix that maybe before the next horde, if we've got enough time. So what these are doing, these are just going to provide a little bit of a blast shield to protect some electric fences that we want to put in here. And that will protect them from any cop explosions that go off on the ramp. Most of the cop explosions I expect to be downstairs, but these will just help out a little bit. Okay, with that done, I think it's time to start upgrading everything. Let's grab a learning elixir and a nail gun and get cracking. Don't really want to get it caught up here with zombies incoming. Oh, it's getting up to six o'clock. Whoop, missed him. Need to get this base finished as quickly as we can. The bikers are not helping that. Oh, I will take the loot back though. With a bit of extra ammo, thank you very much. All right, let's finish off that main walkway. Zombies incoming again. Here we go. One, and there was a mo. There we go. Let's do some nerd polling. Starting to panic a little bit. Running out of cobble as well. So it always takes just that little bit longer than you think it will. So I think they're at least all cobble. Let's see in the two hours that we've got left, whether we can sneak back, make a generator bank, grab an engine, make two electric fences, and go from there. 
Two of those. Take those two first aid kits. And we shouldn't need anything else. We've got the debuffers up. 325 for tonight is the target. 30 seconds of crafting to go. Hurry up. <laughs> go, go, go. So we'll just take some gas. I'm just going to run. Too bad about the leg. Up we go. Come back and do repairs later. Okay. Now I only want the electric fences on the front here. So I'll put one there. You go away. Other fence goes there. Uh, I don't I don't know where I want my generator bank, that's not what we're gonna do. Let's put it just on the floor. Put it there. We'll cover that up with a frame. Put in the engine, refuel that, turn it on. Wire that to there. You There, okay, we have an electric fence live. We have a half finished base. And we have a horde night about to start. Plenty ammo. Got the zombies coming in. Let's take a learning elixir. Okay, this will just help the electric fence, obviously with uh, keeping them off the front of the base. And we have cops. I did expect cops tonight. Check the game so you can win it. And we can have a quick sneaky. That's broken. Ow. Let's just repair that. Mag them in. Since that's going to do a whole lot more damage. Oh, I just got that one. Just got it done. Okay. about the cops what I've done is modified the game stages as part of the mod so that as soon as the cops start to show up in the game normally every single potential horde wave will include cops and that's because the mod only selects one horde wave for each horde night based upon your game stage so if there was the chance that they didn't come then that would leave a fairly uninteresting horde night a normal vanilla game 
has multiple waves in a single horde night, three waves normally. So there's usually a mix of waves, some with cops, obviously later games, some with demolishers. But for this mod, because only a single wave is ever selected, we have to make sure that it's interesting. So every single horde wave will have at least some form of cop once the cops start appearing in the game, or in the horde night stages anyway. Same thing will happen later on with demolishers as well. Once the chance of demolishers starts happening, there will always be the chance of demolishers, as well as cops of some sort, sometimes feral, sometimes radiated, it's a bit of a lucky dip, as with most horde knights, and you're just gonna have to play and see what you get. Right, while there's a bit of a lull, what I'm gonna do is take a recog as well, take another alerting elixir, and then let's get these guns going. With 325 zombies to kill in a horde night, obviously stepping things up a fair bit. That's only going to get worse as we go along. So in the normal game, we're going to have to conserve or make as much ammo as we can. We'll find it and loot it. Because on horde nights like this, I don't think we can afford to just go with melee. It's just too slow. And we need to get through these zombies as fast as we can. Otherwise, we will be here all night. I think our electric fence just crapped out, and I don't know that I brought the required materials to repair that. I think we're stuck without it for the rest of Fortnite now. Which I would tell you how long there is to go, but there isn't. There's 200 zombies, so we are not even halfway, and our electric fence is gone. So now we're going to take more damage on these blocks, and we're going to have to keep a bit more of an eye on that. Let's get the repair materials. Get to the spotlight, obviously. Didn't get time to put that in. I think recog's still going. That's good, that's good, that's good. Hot side, our legs almost healed. See that zombie just went into a little bit of rage mode then. Oop. Get the magnum. Let's deal with the cop. Then use the 9mm since we've got far more of that ammo. Okay, thirsty. Grab a drink. That is going to be one of the problems of the longer running Horde Nights, is we will get hungry and thirsty as the Horde Night goes along. Have to take a drinks break, a refreshing beverage or two. Yeah, our recog's about to run out. There goes the recog, I think it's the recog. Yep. Let's have one more of those. You can see obviously why we use the thin rail, so that whenever the zombies get a little bit stuck up here, they slow and knock off all the ones behind them, just to give us a little bit of a break. Four skill points. That's nice. Whoa, it's getting intense, I tell you. Okay, 83 to go. 
Keep it up. Oh, well, starting to get a few more loot bags now. Take that well, since you're here. And you're trying to push it through the bars to me. I don't know whether it's just I'm used to doing just the hard mode base evaluations, which are all maxed out. So you get more loot bags from doing it that way, or what the go is. You go away, Mr. Cop. So as you can see, it's not been heaps of cops, but there's just been enough to keep things interesting. Remember, we're still fairly low game stage. I hope he's not going to explode. Okay, what have we got? 50 to go. Let's see, he's just sort of half fell onto the squat pillar. Although we might have also lost a block in the middle there. There we have, see? That's why we have the double rail. I actually didn't get to the triple rail that I intended to do. Didn't get time to put the extra one on top. So that double rail has saved us there from complete base failure. If we lose another block, then that path is gone. Or at least if they lose the block underneath. Running out of recog. Reload you for the cop. Oop. Whoa, I just got here. I think if he'd blown up just now, that would have been a bad time. Five skill points. As you can see, they just jump straight back up from that little bit of rail that's down there. Although they do get stuck there, which is more of a risk. So we'll have to reinforce that for next time. Three to go. Okay. Let's stop the waves. Now it'll just be clean up time. You stop that. Think to stop the zombies doing the rage mode further out. We're going to have to invest in some electric traps a little bit further out as well. Jeez, it feels like they haven't stopped. I mean, I know that they have, but they're still coming. Well, there we go. One more. So let's head down. Well, let's first just take a quick look. Not much damage there. A few damages there. Now, I must have missed a block upgrading to concrete. There you go. That, that one's still a frame. Oh man, look at that. So that front rail is still a bloody building frame. 45 of 100 health. So, I mean, on the plus side, the base holds up well. On the downside, I am an absolute idiot. How did I miss that? Let's just fix that up now. And the one underneath was too. Excellent. All right, well, that explains how some of them disappeared. They just weren't particularly strong to start with. All right, let's go check loot bags. Since I think we're done. Not too many, but not too shabby. And... Oh, helmet light mod schematic, which we already have, but I'll read it anyway. I think that is all of the loot bags. So there you go, I've survived the day 15 horde and 325 zombies with a base that's a good design, but kind of unfinished in its implementation. I've even showed that you can go with some of your key blocks just sitting as wood frames, which is probably more dumb luck than anything else. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Please leave a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you'd like to keep up to date on the whole series. Thanks to my awesome Patreons for their support, thanks to you for watching this video, and as always, happy building.